AITA for stepping away from my sister's wedding for 45 minutes to calm down? It's been 8 years, so I feel safe in sharing this. I love my sister, and it's all in the past, but we've never really discussed or resolved this issue because that's not how that part of my family deals with things. TLDR, my sister seated me, one of the bridesmaids, at a table full of people I didn't know at her wedding reception. I left to calm down, but came back to help her celebrate. I, 53F, have never been married, and it took me decades to come to terms with it and make peace. But for years, attending weddings while being single was really upsetting and awkward. Although I'm confident and outgoing in non-romantic situations, I've always struggled with being overweight and have only had a few relationships in my life, so this situation was especially tough and often led me to feel embarrassed. Eight years ago, my half-sister, 28F at the time, married a Brit and insisted on having the wedding in his hometown, even though they lived in the United States. He actually wanted the wedding in our home state, which is a popular travel destination, and his friends and family from England were excited to visit. But my sister was determined to have it in England. At the time, our dad, 72M, was dealing with serious dementia, had cancer, and had mobility issues. One of our other sisters, 30F, whom I'll call Lauren, had been receiving treatment for stage for breast cancer for years and had a 10-month-old baby. Our fourth sister had given birth six weeks early, and her baby had been in intensive care until she was seven months old, making it impossible for her to travel for the wedding. So, the fact that the bride insisted on holding the wedding in England felt a bit insensitive, given the challenges our family faced in trying to travel internationally. For the wedding, Lauren was the maid of honor, I and a cousin were bridesmaids, and three of the bride's friends were also bridesmaids. The bride and groom knew how uncomfortable I often felt at weddings, and they had been supportive in the past. But as we planned the trip, it became clear that they didn't really intend to spend much time with us in Europe. They had a big group of affluent, trendy friends who dominated their social life. They planned to arrive in England early with many of their friends, and then they planned a honeymoon with that whole group, along with his parents, in southern Spain at a beach city right after the wedding. Our dad was not a traveler. His idea of a vacation was camping, and we knew he'd be very uncomfortable in Europe, especially with his dementia. Lauren really wanted to join the group in southern Spain so we could see more of Europe without overburdening her while she was still in treatment and caring for a baby. Lauren and the bride had always been extremely close, almost like best friends, and Lauren was hoping to spend more time with the bride and groom after the wedding. She was also looking forward to some relaxation at the beach after her long battle with illness. But when we tried to make these plans, the bride and groom were very evasive, and it became clear they didn't want us there. We're not sure if it was because they were embarrassed that we weren't part of their trendy social circle, but it felt particularly rude considering we were making our ailing father and our sister, who was fighting cancer, travel overseas for the wedding. If we were going through all of that, we at least wanted to make the trip worthwhile and stay longer than just the few days required for the wedding. It was a struggle to get information from them about travel plans, where to fly into, how to get to the north of England, and where we should stay. Although I had visited Paris years before, I was the only one in our group who had been to Europe. As I mentioned, I'm independent and confident in most situations outside of romance. I was excited to see more of England, so I decided to fly in a day early and take a day tour. I traveled alone to London, enjoyed the tour, and then took the train north, where the groom's aunt kindly met me at the station. She hosted us at her home, and she was wonderful. That evening, we expected to have dinner with the bride and groom, and after a lot of hassle, we finally did, but we were rushed through the evening, and they went out with their friends afterward. The next evening, we transferred to the venue for the rehearsal and dinner. Once again, the bride and groom, especially the groom, seemed to ignore us. The groom barely acknowledged my presence, even though I tried to greet him with enthusiasm. Fast forward to the wedding and reception. I learned that English weddings tend to be quite long. After the ceremony, there was a cocktail hour while we took pictures, and then the bridal party made a grand entrance. Afterward, I went to find my seat. It was then that I realized I had been seated several rows away from the bride, groom, and the rest of the bridal party. I was seated with total strangers, and there was no attempt to introduce me to anyone. In shock and embarrassment, I sat down and tried to make conversation, but I was getting increasingly upset. I didn't understand why I couldn't at least have been seated with the groom's aunt, whom I had stayed with, or a couple of family friends who had traveled to the wedding. Rather than cry in front of everyone, I excused myself and found a quiet corner of the venue to calm down. I couldn't stop crying, and I'm one of those people who looks absolutely terrible after crying. There's no hiding it. The bride eventually noticed I was gone and sent Lauren to find me. Lauren was very sympathetic, but I'm also one of those people who cries even more if someone asks what's wrong. So, I thanked her, told her to go back, and said I'd rejoin them after fixing my makeup, which I did. I don't know how long I was gone, but dinner was over by the time I returned, and the toasts had started. Lauren, as the maid of honor, gave a speech, as did my dad and others. By then, I had calmed down enough to smile and applaud. After her speech, Lauren came to check on me and said that when she explained to the bride and groom why I was upset, they just rolled their eyes and said I was being dramatic. I did my best for the rest of the night to participate in the celebration. The bride never mentioned it, and the groom didn't speak to me for the rest of the evening. 
Back in the States, there was some resentment, but we worked through it as a family because we care about each other. A few years later, the groom made a sarcastic comment about the situation, almost mocking me, and I snapped back, telling him that he hadn't even bothered to introduce me to the people I was seated with. He said he didn't think it was a big deal because I can't have talked to anyone. I asked if he really wanted to discuss it, and he said no, so we dropped it. We're all fine today, and I love them dearly, but writing this still brings up a lot of feelings. So, AITA for getting upset at my sister's wedding and stepping away to calm down? P.S. Sorry, I wasn't more brief.